Thanks, Dr. Campbell. Up next, we have Alexandra. Hi, Alexandra. Hi, hello uh, from Berlin. <laughs> Thank you for your beautiful lecture. Um, I wanted to ask about the metabolism uh, of protein for people who, who seem to need a lot of protein, otherwise blood sugar goes up. Like when I eat plant-based diet, which I love, I usually crave um, heavy protein soon because after 50 minutes or so, after having had quinoa, a little bit of black bean and a lot of salad, etc., after 50 minutes, I'm hungry like hell again. And I feel like, oh shit, I need, I need, I need a fish or something. And by, by intellect, I know this is somehow not very useful, but what can I do? I mean, I'm very thin, I'm a water type, I have a quick metabolistic nature. So what could I do? Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a really good question. Is, is you're not alone. Uh, you know, a, a number of people have had that uh, that kind of experience, um, and uh, I, I do appreciate it. And I, you know, I had to change too. All of us have to change, and you know, in due course when you make your mind up. But um, it, it's sometimes difficult for people when they're so used to the other sort of way of doing doing it. Here's here's the thing I think for me at least uh, is is a, a pretty useful idea. If you can stay on it for a month maybe two months, some cases, or so like that. What happens, and, and really st stay strict with it, maybe tough for some people, but stay with it. What happens is that we become, our, our taste preferences begin to change. We want a different kind of food. Our body by that time has adjusted quite well. And first thing you know, after one, two, three months, something like that, uh, then you get to the point where you say, why did I ever eat that other food? You actually crave a salad. You don't eat the salad just because you think it's good for you. You actually crave a salad. And so the, the whole world begins to change, but it does take persistence and, you know, kind of stick into it, uh, you know, for that period of time. Um, it's, you know, the, the, uh, the equivalent of that story, I think, is for the smokers who have spent, uh, you know, a good many years, let, let's say, smoking. They, they have to quit. And you know the story there. They, well, a lot of them have a really difficult time. Uh, and then, so the doctor says quit. Well, then they find out they can't quite quit and they want to have one here and there. And what. Well, you can't do that because if, if they're teasing themselves with doing the wrong thing, they're only going to revert back. That's what the data show. There's been pretty good studies on that. So the same thing with this diet. If you don't get there and, and be there where you really feel the benefits of it, uh, you're, you're going to keep slipping back. And of course, like you said, one of the earliest, earliest experiences is actually feeling hungry. And, you'll, and you're, when your body changes, when it changes, um, yeah, you, you get hungry at the usual times. Uh, uh, you don't tend not to overeat. You, don't, you never want to stop yourself. I mean, I know this well. I'm, I'm from a farm. We ate that kind of food, of course, produced it and ate it ourselves. And so when you get that whole food plant-based diet idea and really stay with it, Maybe that's not the answer you're looking for, but it does work for an awful lot of people. Uh, and you'll get, you'll get past that. I'm pretty confident. Thanks, Dr. Campbell. Up next, we have Sanjita, if you'd go ahead with your question for T. Colin Campbell. Uh, thank you, Dr. Campbell, for a wonderful uh, presentation. My question is about my own family member who has a uh, has to new and ER positive uh, cancer for last two years, been on trastuzumab uh, and seems pretty good, no side effect. My question for her uh, is that you were pointing out the IGF-1 in the casein and what would be your recommendation for her uh, complete avoidance of casein? And what about the natural sugar, like a fruit? What would be your recommendation so we can kind of like really keep her as healthy as possible while being on this uh, trastuzumab? What would be your main recommendation and the topmost recommendation, Dr. Campbell? Yes, um, this is something I meant to say, did not say, um, that uh, and we have really good data to improve this point, namely, um, we don't need to eat animal food to get that protein. That's been an assumption for, gosh, more than a century. That's part of one of my talks. Uh, we, we have always believed we need some meat, we gotta have that protein. Well, quite frankly, that's, that's not true. <clears throat> Plants have all the protein we need. 
So if you're giving up uh, animal protein, you, you don't need to think about, well, well, how can I substitute that with some other special kind of protein? Don't even think about it. I mean, even the, pl even the plant diet, the whole food plant-based diet that has the least protein in it, let's say you, if you just ate potatoes all day long, uh, you would get around eight to nine percent protein or better. And that, that's all the protein we need. The plants provide all the protein we need and a lot of plant-based diets, you know, from time to time will be up around 15, 16, 17, 18 percent protein without any problem. Um, and so we just don't need the animal food to get that protein. That was a bill of goods that was sold uh, starting in 1839 when protein was first discovered. Uh, so uh, it, again, uh, maybe, maybe not the kind of answer you're looking for, but it, the, the point is that it, this, this whole food plant-based idea is so grand and so broad and, and so comfortable when you finally get there that you know, these questions, these detailed questions tend to disappear. Because first, and I, I've given a lot of lectures over the last uh, several years, and I have a lot of people coming up and asking specific questions. And also a lot of people come up, sometimes very emotionally, to tell a problem that they had and have resolved it. Um, and uh, yet, it, it turns out, it's yet another kind of disease. Maybe I never heard of it before. Uh, maybe especially an autoimmune kind of disease. That, that might have occurred. And uh, they, it, 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 this breadth of effect is in my way, I like to describe it as, uh, quite frankly, as a fact of nature, fact of nature. Uh, this is what nature is. Uh, when I was looking at inside of cells and trying to understand you know, how things work and that sort of thing, I really became impressed, and that's another couple of lectures, but I really came impressed with the complexity and those reactions are infinitely complex. And uh, to try to figure out one thing to tackle one, one reaction or one thing at a time, uh, let's say with a chemical or drug or whatever, one nutrient, that makes no sense. It makes no sense because, so that's why we, we turn to whole food. And when you turn to whole food, it turns out nature, it didn't sort of uh, use that whole food plant-based diet to let's say resolve heart disease and increase cancer or vice versa. What nature, I mean, I have a great deal of respect for nature. We are a part of nature. When she decided to, well, I'm, I'm being a little bit teleological here, but when she, when she decided to create the system, let's say it that way, it's crazy, but uh, when, when that started to occur, uh, it wasn't like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this diet to increase that or decrease that disease and another kind of diet to, to increase this disease. No, it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way. Uh, it's just a whole food plant-based diet, which has a lot of variety in it. You know, lots of legumes, peas and beans and stuff like that. You can take, use what you like. A lot of different leafy vegetables. None is necessarily any more important than any other. And whole grains and so forth. It's just mix and match. Um, don't even think about all these complexities. Uh, don't think so much about the detail of the way they get this or that. Just eat a whole food plant-based diet and uh, enjoy. You know, don't get don't get too caught up in all this science stuff that you hear about all the time.